In today's lesson, we're going to take a look at the principles of equilibrium um, within chemical reactions. So the essential question is, how is the equilibrium of a chemical system similar to homeostasis in living things? Because uh, there's similar ideas where in homeostasis, homeostasis organisms are trying to, um, to reach some sort of balance or steady state, and equilibrium is the same principle where a chemical reaction is trying to reach some sort of balance or steady state. Um, so this is the definition for chemical equilibrium, um, where, it, where basically chemical equilibrium is the rate, or excuse me, the state in which the forward and reverse reactions balance each other out because they're taking place at equal rates. In other words, the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reactions. Um, and at equilibrium, the concentration of reactants and products are constant. So what this basically means is that um, the, the, the rate or how fast a reaction is moving in one direction is equal to the rate at which it's moving in the opposite direction. Um, and then the concentrations um, start, are, are constant. They balance out. Um, you know, this may be a little abstract, um, so we're just going to go over the principles and um, we'll do some, you'll do some activities to, you know, to help you better understand what's going on. But let's just go over some key terms. Okay, so we also need to know what reversible reactions are. So a reversible reaction is a chemical reaction that can occur in both the forward and the reverse directions. So for example, this reaction um, here in the forward direction, you have nitrogen gas plus three moles of hydrogen gas, giving you two moles of ammonia gas. The reverse reaction would be two moles of ammonia gas, giving you three moles of hydrogen gas um, and, um, excuse me, uh, one mole of nitrogen gas. Okay, so they're reversible. And the way we indicate that they're reversible is that they're arrows that point in the opposite direction. So whenever you see an equation where the arrows are going in the opposite direction, it means that the reaction is reversible. It can proceed um, in both directions. Now, there are certain factors that can affect chemical equilibrium, and it's uh, referred to as Le Chatelier's principle. And what this principle says, it states that if a stress is applied to a system um, at equilibrium, the system shifts in the direction that relieves the stress. So in other words, if something is affecting the reaction, um, the reaction is going to want to move in the opposite direction. And then these are some factors that can, um, that can stress the reaction out. I don't mean stress in, you know, in terms of the way we use it, but I mean certain factors, certain things that can affect how the reaction is going. And some of these include changes in concentration, changes in volume and pressure, and changes in temperature. These things can affect um, the equilibrium of a reaction and push it to go in one direction or the opposite direction. So for example, if we take a look at changes in concentration, if we have this substance here, which is carbon monoxide gas plus three moles of hydrogen gas, which gives you one mole of methane gas and one mole of water in the gaseous phase or so water vapor. If I add a reactant, if I add more of the carbon monoxide or the hydrogen, the reaction is going to want to shift to the right in order to relieve that stress because there's too much um, of the reactants. Um, if I remove products, if I take away these products, the methane and the water, the reaction is also going to want to shift to the right in order to replace the um, the methane and the water that I'm taking out. Now, if I add pro products, which are the methane and the water, if I add more of these, it's going to shift the reaction to the left. If I remove reactants, if I remove carbon monoxide and hydrogen, um, the system is going to want to replace it, so it's going to force the reaction to shift to the left. Now, changes in volume and pressure can also um, affect the equilibrium of a reaction. So if I take the same reaction, where if I have carbon monoxide and hydrogen giving me methane and water, now um, you have to count 
how many moles of gaseous product of reactants there are. So right now there's four moles of gaseous reactants. There's one mole of this plus three moles of this for a total of four moles of gaseous reactants. There are two moles of gaseous products. There's one mole of this and there's one mole of this for two. So if I increase the pressure, since there's more moles of this, it's going to shift the reaction to the right. Okay? So I know it's a little confusing. If the moles of the gas are equal on both sides, then there's going to be no net effect on the equilibrium of the reaction. Um, and then we also have to take a look at changes in temperature. We've spoken before about exothermic reactions, which are reactions where heat is released. So if I have this same reaction here, um, which is exothermic because there's heat on this side, if heat is added or if I increase the temperature, the reaction is going to want to shift to the left to move away from that, um, from that stress. Okay. If heat is removed or if the temperature is decreased, the reaction is going to want to shift to the right. Now for endothermic reactions where heat is absorbed, so in this reaction we have um, dinitrogen tetraoxide plus heat giving you two moles of nitrogen dioxide. If heat is increased or if heat is added, the reaction is going to shift to the right. And if heat is removed, the reaction is going to shift to the left. Okay, so we're going to work on some problems um, on this, and we're also going to take a look at some, um, some chemical reactions um, in the lab so that you can get a better understanding. Okay, all right, we'll stop here.